Happy Wednesday, everyone. Um, hope you're ready to see some information here. I'm hoping that I got some good stuff for you. I got a couple questions. Um, actually, one question and then one observation of something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. So let's get to the question first. Um, Jack Durning wrote me a question and says, I know you've done videos on joining boards together. Uh, when you did the video, you just glued the boards together. I was wondering what your opinion was as far as using biscuits. Do, uh, do you think they would add strength to the joint or is it a waste of time? So, um, what he's referring to, uh, if for you guys that don't know, you can get a biscuit joiner, and I have one. I used to use it quite a bit, um, but what I found is this is, uh, and this is what he's talking about gluing boards together. This is a laminated two-inch redwood, and um, for a, this is a, just a cut off of a, off of a bigger sign that I made, and I used on this I used the Gorilla Glue. You can kind of see it's kind of dried up there. It kind of turns into a foam. Um, so my um, my opinion of a biscuit joiner, as far as making signs, I th I found it was just kind of not necessary. Uh, if if we were making a, a big board that was gonna people were gonna walk on and it had to have extra strength, I think that a biscuit joiner probably is a good idea or dowels or any kind of a, a system, a joining system, I think is more applicable. As far as signage, um, you know, there's no real stress on the joints here. Um, and I find that with a Gorilla Glue that the wood is actually probably going to break before the, the uh, glue joints do. So for me, it just seems like a waste of time uh, and effort. So now the one thing that the biscuits do or dowels do is they keep it once you've got them in place and you put your board together, they keep the, um, the board's surfaces uh, square or flat so you don't have any uh, any movement but the little bit of movement that I do that I have on boards moving you know this way um, when I'm gluing these boards together uh, it's pretty easy to surface down I use like I've showed before I use uh, an electric hand plane um, if you've got a big planer I've got a 12 inch planer but if it's a big board that I can't you know use that except in 12 inch pieces so um, but I just find that it's it was just a lot more work than I needed to do, and uh, so I just kind of discontinued using a biscuit joiner. Those of you that like it and use it, hey, I just don't feel that it's it gives it any extra strength that is really necessary for a sign. If you're building a house or you're building a plank or something like that that is it needs that extra uh, strength, then that's great. Um, anyway, so I hope that kind of uh, answers that question. Now. This one, I, this has been a long time in the making. If you go back and watch uh, video number 185, um, I was testing the spray white primer on that video. And I sprayed two different boards, and these are the boards that I sprayed. And what I did was I wanted to check the finish uh, and experiment with the finish of the Krylon versus and I was going to bring a can out with me. The Krylon versus the Helmsman Spar Urethane. So here's, uh, and the date on that, by the way, is September 5th. I wrote it on the back. September 5th of last year, 2016. So this gives you an idea. Um, this has, half of this has the Krylon, and the other half has the, um, the Helmsman in the spray can. Okay, so let me, yeah, so I'm showing it upside down. This has 10 coats of this spray can. I just kept putting coats on for several days. This has 10 coats of the Helmsman uh, clear acrylic. Uh, it's called crystal clear. Um, and this tells you the difference between the two. So does that, does it really show up on camera, babe? Okay, so uh, again, there is 10 coats of the Krylon versus 10 coats of the Helms and Spar Urethane. And you can see a huge difference. Now I've had this setting literally setting flat out there in the middle of the weather with rain 
uh, and every every day since September 5th of last year it's been sitting out in the weather sometimes the wind would blow it down and pick it up and put it back where it was but um, you know a lot of times the rain would actually set on it um, so that uh, that Krylon I got to say that stuff didn't hold up near like the helmsman did so um, I, I this is an experiment that I've been wanting to show for quite a while now here's the other piece that I did now this has got just one coat of Krylon spray one coat of helmsman spray but then after that dried I put one brush coat of helmsman over the whole thing now you can see this is only one coat of Krylon but I put the helmsman uh, brush coat the helmsman spar urethane I put a brush coat over the whole thing and you can see it actually held up pretty well so um, that helmsman spar urethane far far superior to the um, to the Krylon it even protected the Krylon by putting a brush coat over the top of it and this was done at exactly the same time so if you go back and watch that 185 you'll see that I, what I was really doing was I was testing the white now the the one negative I guess if I could say there's a negative is that the white is kind of a yellowish color it kind of because the helmsman has a uh, an amber color to it it kind of made it a little bit yellow but sh it sure held up uh, from a surface standpoint a lot better than the Krylon did so anyway there's the definitive um, experiment results on the Krylon versus the helmsman what are you looking at oh he's enjoying the sunshine Magnum. Mag. what are you doing Meg Magnum you can see his ear Magnum Hi. <laughs> Not a lot of energy. Yeah. Sun feels good. He hates the summertime. He is not a summertime dog. He's a wintertime dog. When it's it, even when it was snowing, he was out running around in it. He's a uh, Italian. They like this <laughs> with a fur coat. They like the uh, the cold. All right. So I have a couple sign carvers of the day. Anyway, guys, if you have questions on this stuff, let me know. Now I'm still experimenting with that czar um, water-based um, polyurethane that I got uh, uh, from. Um, I didn't get it from him, but he suggested to use it. Idaho painter Chris Berry. So I'm still experimenting with that. The 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 uh, jury's still out on that. All right. So first um, sign carver of the day. I think this is a first sign. Yeah, Keith. Or, excuse me, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, Cuthers. I like that font. What does it say? What what's his last name? Cuthbertson. Cuthbertson. That's it. Yeah. Good job. We'll let you uh, take the heat for mispronouncing something. I, I did yesterday or the other day. Um, anyway, great. Uh, I believe that's like the curls font, but uh, great job for a first sign. Great job, Kevin. And now this one is pretty special. Mario Salinas. Check this out. Now this is not his first sign by any stretch. He's been doing signs for a while. But there's kind of a caveat on this. I've got a story that goes along with it. Check this out. Great looking sign, Mario. So this is his story, the email that he wrote with this sign. In fact, I'll hold this up and I'll read. Well, I can't. Oh, okay. Um, I decided to carve this sign for my wife and I. I spent a good hour laying it out and drawing the trees freehand so the figures would lean up against. I showed it to my wife after the layout and she loved it. So we went to the sh so I went to the shop and carved it. If you will notice, both my wife and I failed to check the spelling. My wife's name is spelled L U P I T A, not L U P T A. <laughs> Well, it won't be going in the fire pit. It's going to hang at my carving station to remind me to spell check before I start carving. And then he says, feel free to share. So <laughs> that just goes to show that you can never, um, 
checked the spelling too many times and I, I wrote him back and said, hey, I just misspelled one last year and I've been doing this for about f almost five decades. So uh, spell check, spell check, spell check, guys. Always spell check, even when you're making a sign for yourself. Anyway, I thought that was kind of a neat story and, and thought you guys might get a kick out of it. So guys, that is it. Um, I'm hoping for a really cool uh, collaboration coming up very, very soon, like maybe Friday if it all goes well. We'll see. Um, and we've got a lot of great things in the works. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. If you have questions, uh, email me. What, got the dog in the background still? <laughs> email me, let me know if there's anything I can help with. Um, please uh, thumbs up if this was helpful. If it was really helpful, please share it with your friends, people that are into woodworking or think might want to get into woodworking. We appreciate it. Um, oh, and be sure if you want to get a message to me, again, I, I harp on this a lot because I still get a lot of messages through Facebook and I think I'm missing some of them because I just don't spend a lot of time on Facebook like I used to. I just don't have the time. So if you really want to get a message to me, email me directly, eric at makeawoodsign.com and I will always get back to you on that unless it for some reason doesn't go through. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. Um, and oh, by the way, if you subscribe, be sure and click on that little bell icon to get notifications when we put out a new video. I, I never, I, I don't say that enough. So if you don't click on that for notifications, then when we put out a video, you won't know it unless you go to the channel and check. If you do, then you'll know right away. Anyway, guys, thanks again so much and have a great day and we'll see you on Friday. Bye.